Hey guys, Jerem here. Welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This week I've got a really quick one for you. We're going to take a look at die grinders. But first, some viewer knives. Actually, I don't I don't have any viewer knives ready to go, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a voiceover in post production, but they're gonna go right here. All right, so the first knife we're gonna take a look at is from Badger Airsoft from Poland. Uh, this was his very first knife he ever made, so very cool looking Rambo style blade. Good job on your first knife. All right, now the next knife we're gonna look at is sent to me from Blue Dog Garage, a fellow YouTuber. This was his friend Kyle's knife that he'd made. And after he'd made it, he wasn't feeling all that great about it. He wasn't too pleased with it. And uh, Blue Dog Garage had asked if I would feature it on Tool Time Tuesday just to give his buddy a boost of confidence. And you know what? This is a great looking blade. I think this is a fantastic start into knife making. So Kyle, great job. Keep up the great work. Also, I'll put a link to Blue Dog Garage's channel in the description below. He's got all kinds of great videos on making all different types of stuff, including a really nice belt grinder. So check out his channel if you haven't before. And last but certainly not least, uh, this is a really cool knife made from a table saw. As you can see there, a table saw blade. Uh, this is sent to me from Steven uh, in Germany. Uh, Steven, thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate it. Very nice looking blade here. Keep up the great work. All right, thank you to everyone for sending in your knives. Really appreciate it. If you'd like to have your knives featured, just email me, jeremy at homesteadknives.com. Let's get into the Tool Time Tuesday for this week. All right, so these are different versions of die grinders. Why would you want a die grinder? Well, there's tons of uses for these. There's so many different industries and applications from auto body to uh, welding and fabrication. You can use them. They're very handy in knife making, and they're essentially just a high-speed rotary tool. Different than, say, like a Dremel or a Fordham, this one, even though the Fordham is a one-fifth horsepower motor, it's still a little bit more precise, and I like to leave this for some nicer work. Whereas for my die grinders, if I've got some heavy hogging of material to do, that's when these guys come out. Having said that, you can do really nice, intricate work with these as well. Um, let's take a look at the electric first of all. Uh, these are really handy if you don't have an air compressor. This one here is a Makita. This is a bit of a vintage girl. I'm not sure if they make this one again uh, like this, but this one here runs at 2,700 RPM. On it... I've just got a metal cutting burr, and this thing removes steel like crazy. Uh, one thing when you're using these, you're gonna wanna have all your PPE on. Um, they're loud, they're, they can create a lot of dust, and then especially safety glasses, because this will shoot off little shards of metal like crazy. Also, when I'm using this for extended periods of time, I'll often like dra drape a rag or a handkerchief like underneath my hat so it covers my neck, because the little tiny filings that come off of these are just horrible. Uh, they itch and they're crazy, but just, just considerations when you're using stuff like this. So uh, this big one here I use for my really heavy, heavy duty stuff. As with most things that I do on Tool Time Tuesday, there's so many different um, accessories and options that you can get for these uh, that I don't have anywhere near uh, what's available out there, but you can kind of use your imagination. Most of them are typically a quarter inch shank, um, so it's got the collet in there, and most of them are just simple ones. They usually don't, these usually don't come with chucks, they're just a quick, just a simple collet and they take a quarter inch shank. But even with the quarter inch, you can get all different types of things like, Sanding drums, different types of wire wheels. This one here is a stainless wire wheel. And then you can also get these uh, flat grinding pads and stuff. And this one here is a surface conditioning pad in here. I've got all different types of grits of sandpaper. And these are very, very handy for metal prep work. Uh, the surface conditioning pad just takes rust off really well. One thing I actually use these a lot for is for taking the paint off of the walls of my sea container, my shipping container, when I need to weld stuff to it. Uh, Auto body guys love these because they allow really fine, in intricate control when you're, when you're sanding stuff down. And just for general metal fabrication, these things are invaluable. Typically, not necessarily recommended for wood carving applications. I think probably just because of the dust. Unless you have a pneumatic one, then it's totally fine. But something like this, I wouldn't want a lot of wood dust getting into here. Um, I don't know, it just wouldn't be ideal. Now, one advantage of the electric over the pneumatic, obviously, is that you don't need an air compressor. If you are going to look at different pneumatic options, make sure your air compressor is large enough to handle them. Uh, they'll come when you buy them. They have a CFM requirement. Uh, this one doesn't have it on there. 
But these take quite a large volume of air to run them. So you're going to need a decent sized air compressor. I had all these at work and uh, I never brought them home until I actually got my 60 gallon air compressor that, that had an output that was high enough to meet the demands of this. So just keep that in mind. If you've got a really small pancake air compressor or something like that, that is not going to run these die grinders very well at all. And you're just going to end up taxing the, you're going to end up running your air compressor way too hard. So just keep an eye out for that. And that's where these electrics are kind of handy. You just plug them in and you're good to go. Most of them run around 2,500 RPM, all different types of things. Now, one thing I would like to caution and just give a word of warning about, a lot of people will put on cutting discs like this one here and just use this on here. The danger with that, obviously, is you don't have a shroud. Uh, this is a small handheld cutoff grinder and this one has the shroud on it. And so this one's actually designed for uh, cutting there. I've got a little zip disc in there, really, really handy. It's, I mean, yeah, essentially it's just a die grinder, uh, but it's not. It's actually different. If you look closely at this one, it's actually got a completely different uh, mandrel and stuff there. So you see the shadow? That's the cat. You hear the cat? Hey, Sparkles. Sparkles. Anyways, just keep that in mind. Don't run these cutoff discs. As a safety precaution, don't run these cutoff discs in one of these regular ones. It's just a risk. If it explodes, it binds or something, it can come flying at your face, whereas this guard, uh, in theory, is supposed to help protect that. So yeah, really quickly, some people don't know what these are, some people have never seen them, really handy tools. I, I use these all the time, even now, even just today I was using this for some uh, cleaning up some of these grooves on these little blades here, uh, just to be able to get in there and really hog off material. My horizontal belt grinder won't get into here without opening this part of it up too much. So I just clamp this in the vise and I just hog this material away with the die grinders. Okay, so I've got a piece of 3 uh, mild steel plate here, and I'm just gonna show you how, this, how well this thing cuts. One thing you want to keep in mind, if you're using these rotary burrs, you want to make sure you've always got a little bit of clearance around the tool. What I mean by that is that if I were to take this and just to try cutting a straight line down into the material, what happens is that there's not enough clearance around the tool for the, the material that's been cut to eject. It'll actually bind and start this really nasty, violent vibration. Once it happens to you, you know exactly what's happened. It's kind of like, and it shakes your hands and it busts off the teeth of your cutter. So you really want to avoid that. You want to always make sure when you're cutting, you're keeping a little bit of clearance and you're not, you're not going to captivate this cutter in, its, in the diameter of the cutter itself. So just keep that in mind. Also, gloves, a very good idea when you're doing this. Hearing protection, I'd say a must, as well as safety protection, critical. All right, so that's just a quick demonstration on how powerful and useful these die grinders can be. With all the different attachments that are out there, there's so many different applications for these things. Uh, I didn't even show you using a right angled one yet, but just imagine this as a very precise and easy to control angle grinder. You know, if you're doing surface prep or you're deburring edges or doing some shaping, some contouring, whatever it is, these are just as handy and I use them all the time. The pneumatic ones, they're starting to become more common in places like Home Depot and auto supply stores. Um, Electric ones are a little harder to find and usually those are found more in industrial supply shops or welding shops, kind of more specific uh, specialty uh, fabrication shops. But either option is absolutely fantastic. I find the electric are a little more powerful. They've got a little more torque to them. Uh, the pneumatic ones seem to stall out when you're doing really heavy work. And again, if you're going for the pneumatic, you're gonna need a compressor that can handle that type of a, a flow rate. Uh, if you're not, if you don't have a decent air compressor, electric's a really great way to go, and it's also easy to use anywhere. You can plug it into a 110 volt outlet and you've got your die grinder. Even with my horizontal belt grinder and my milling machine, I still use my die grinders on a very regular basis, at least once or twice a week. So very useful tools, and if you're just setting up a shop and you're wanting to get into metal fabrication and making stuff, die grinders, super handy to have. Even for simple things like enlarging a hole, if you don't have a drill with the right size. You can drill a whatever hole and then make it bigger and shape it, contour stuff, make slots on things. Just really handy tools to have. So many different applications. I hope you enjoyed this week's Tool Time Tuesday. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.